Great. Um, How are you? Hi. Nice to see you over. With nice it. to see you. Um, yes. So I'll let you get started and then just tell me just when you want to turn it over to me. Perfect. Okay. So I'm just going to quickly introduce you to everyone. Okay. That's great. Perfect. So hi guys, welcome to our second ALD event of the semester. So this is Miss McCloyd. She'll be running this presentation and will be talking to us all about our personal statements, grad school, and how their office, so the Office of Career and Professional Development can actually help all of you individually. Um, a little background, Miss McCloyd has been working with High Point since 2012 and she can't wait to uh, share all her knowledge. So Miss McCloyd, I will pass it off to you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so I, I want to share some content on, I want to share our website, but I'm going to hopefully get that up there and you all can see it without any technical issues. But before I start, I want to just tell you something that's pretty cool. Um, not tomorrow, but next Friday, that is October the 16th we are hosting a graduate school panel and i hope that all of you will join us it, it's at 12 noon it's going to be an in-person thing and not not a webex thing but we are doing it in kushner ballroom here in cottrell so it's first floor of cottrell hall um, it's a big space so everyone can be you know distance and we'll have four panelists that um, i think you'll really be interested in hearing from uh, the first one is Lauren, who will represent the graduate school here at High Point University and just talk a little bit about um, how they operate and admissions and all that kind of stuff. And even though you might not want to go to grad school at HPU, she can answer very general questions about the process. Okay. And then we have three panelists. Uh, Jenna is a current student in the new master's program in communication and leadership, uh, business leadership, um, CBL is what they call it, communication and business leadership. Um, so that program, a current senior, um, Caroline Thomas, and she's in the process of applying medical school. She's already been accepted to one medical school. And um, this panel is on the 16th and then on the 19th, Caroline has an interview at UNC Chapel Hill School of Medicine. So she is no joke. She has been through the process. Um, and then we have another student, Brooke Sullivan, who is a current graduate student in um, physical therapy here in, in HPU's PT program. That's a doctorate program, Doctor of Physical Therapy. So um, please join us for that. Uh, program and there may be a little bit of repetition in what you're going to hear from me today but the beauty of the panel is that you get to hear from uh, four different people um can can everyone and jordan i'll let you speak do, is, do you think everyone's hearing me okay yes no i hear you perfectly um i'm sure everyone else is hearing you and we're also recording this lesson this uh program We'll send it out to all of our members, even if, if there is any technical difficulties with people's individual devices. So no one will miss anything. So we will be sending this out to everyone. Okay, wonderful. Um, okay, so I've invited you to the panel and, and the timing is great on that since that's happening next week. Um, now I'm going to attempt to share my screen. Um, Can everyone see, did I lose you all? Are you there? No, you're good. Yes, we okay. hear you and we see you. Okay, and, and I'm sorry to keep asking that, but I'm not very good with, with all this and I'm getting better. Um, so we're on the High Point website and I'm gonna come down into these columns under holistic learning. I really like that they put us in that category because that is very appropriate. We, we are very much involved with helping you as a whole person. Um, in fact, I, I like to tell students that 
Wake Forest University, which, you know, is a neighbor school, um, they actually call our department personal and career development. They, they have the word personal in theirs, and we have the word professional in ours. Um, so if you go to career and professional development, and you go over here to the left side, um, these are all the wonderful things that we do. Okay, so I'm going to actually come back to this, but I want to start out by going to the graduate school um, section. So if you go to deciding to apply, um, we have lots of good information. There was no need for me to put together any kind of presentation because it's right here. So we're just going to kind of walk through it. Um, and what I would tell you is if you're thinking about graduate school, it's really, really important that you talk with people who get that degree. So let's say you're thinking about getting a master's in counseling. Um, maybe you're thinking about getting um, an MBA or going on to get your master's in psychology or something like that. Um, it's very important to talk to people who have that degree and find out why did they get the degree? What did it do for them? What kind of career options does that open up? Um, and of course, you're going to hear some of that at the panel next week. But what I would tell you is it's very critical that you do not go to graduate school because you're afraid to look for a job. And that's being kind of blunt, but um, every year students end up in grad school that they really aren't sure why they're there. They're not really sure why they picked that program. Um, but it seemed like a better option than kind of getting thrown out into the job market. So that's not ever a great reason to do it. Um, there are fields that do not require a graduate degree. And in fact, there are fields where having a graduate degree is somewhat overqualified. Um, so that's important for you to know that. And then there are fields where you absolutely have to have a master's as your ticket in. And I'll give you an example. Um, my job as a career counselor um, and, and sort of a companion job would be being a guidance counselor at your high school, the high school that you graduated from. I'm sure you all had guidance counselors. It's the same degree that we have, uh, just my job in college. But you can't get my job unless you have a master's degree. It's the entry point. And I tell students all the time, what I do is not rocket science. It's not hard. Um, it's just that to be for certification purposes and for the university to maintain their accreditation, there are certain positions in a university where you have to have a master's. So, um, I, you know, that would be important if somebody wanted to be a career counselor. They would need to know that before they start looking for those jobs because it's going to say that a master's is the entry requirement. Um, so pre-professional, some of you may be in, and I know I'm talking to a pretty large group and, and I'm so Happy to see all of you on this um, seminar, that there's a, a lot of you there. Um, some of you are in pre-professional tracks, and you understand that that's preparing you to go on to law school, med school, um, and some of the other health professions like PT or PA. Um, there, are, there are some tracks that you jump in very early as a freshman or sophomore. And then there are other fields, like, for example, psychology, um, where you could decide to major in psychology, um, you know, later on into your sophomore year. You get your major. Maybe you even get out of school and work for a year, um, you know, doing something that you enjoy, maybe working in a resort, in hospitality, once COVID lifts. <laughs> um, and then you decide after a year you're going to go back to school. But um, that's sort of when we say pre-professional, pre that's sort of what we mean, is that you're in an undergraduate program where you know it's going to take you to a professional 
level graduate program. Um, okay, so you see what's there. Uh, there's some great resources, gradschools.com, U.S. News and World Report, Princeton Review, Peterson's. Those have been around a long time, but we do have links to those. Um, now, once you decide, and, and let me go back. Um, before you apply and while you're still in the deciding phase, I think one of your key, um, I want to use the word adversary, like your key person to turn to is your faculty. And um, in fact, in some schools, the career office doesn't handle graduate preparation at all. And some schools, it only runs through the faculty. Um, but here we sort of partner with faculty. But I will say, I feel comfortable saying that your faculty are, should be your very first people you turn to. Because if you're thinking about getting a, de a graduate degree in psychology, that faculty person in psychology has that degree. Um, if you're thinking about getting a, grad a, a master's or doctorate in history or English, um, those professors have been through those programs. In our office, most of us have degrees in education. My, my master's is in education with sort of my major, if you want to call it that. It was like a, a master's in education with a focus in college student counseling. Um, so I don't have a master's in psychology or a doctorate in psychology, but your professors do, and so that's why I think they would be some of the best people to talk to. Um, okay, let's look at the application process. And, um, it's all here for you, and I know you all know about the entrance exam, the GRE, the MCAT, that's Medical College Admissions, LSAT is Law School, and GMAT is Graduate Management. So GMAT is usually for MBA programs. Um, there's a lot, there's good stuff there. There's review courses for taking those exams. Um, something I've heard from students, I don't know if this is really true, um, many of them say that you can get test questions online, you can prepare online without paying the big bucks to Kaplan and Princeton, um, because it is very costly to take those courses. All right, let's get to the personal statement. So um, let's, can everyone see this okay? Jordan, yes, I, okay. yes, you're good. Okay, all right, good. Okay, thank you. So um, now I'm only showing four people up there. Is everybody else there? I don't know. Yeah, everyone's here. It's just the way you can view it because your screen is your main focal point, but everyone else is there. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, so it's it's all here, and um, so the I don't want to be repetitive. You you all are very smart students that I'm talking to, and, and I know that. I know that I've got the top students here, and I'm, it, it makes me a little bit, um, it makes me feel like I'm a little bit on the spot, to tell you the truth. Um, so you all can read all that's here, but I would tell you that your personal statement, um, it absolutely has to be compelling, and I, I really like that word. Um, if someone wants to go to law school, they, they don't want to start out their personal statement by saying something like, um, I'm really interested in going to law school because I have watched a lot of movies and television shows about law and order and, and, and et cetera, et cetera. And it looks really cool, and I think I would, would like being in the courtroom. It looks dramatic and fun. I'd like to be in the courtroom. Uh, not so much. Um, you need to have a personal reason that ties you to wanting to go to law school. There, there needs to be a hook right in that opening part of your essay. Um, and I will tell you that we've had personal statements come through the office for review, and we get to the end of them, and they never mention the school. Like, if you're applying to UNC Chapel Hill School of Law, in that personal statement, you need to talk about UNC Chapel Hill, why you want to go to school there, 
what it is about that law school that draws you there. Um, and, and I definitely have read statements where it sounds very generic and they never mention the actual school. So that's something you do not want to do. If you apply to multiple schools, you want to go into that personal statement and tweak it. And yes, the body of it, the sort of the meat of it can be the same for each school, but you want to personalize it for that program. Um, let's see, so I'm working with a student right now um, who's planning to apply to law school to, for family law. She already knows she wants to, to do family law. And one of the schools that she's applying to does not have an emphasis in family law, but she still wants to apply to them. So it's very important for her to go into that personal statement and take out references to the family law emphasis because that particular school doesn't have it. And, and they would read her statement and be like, wait a minute, you know, you sent this to the wrong school, okay? Um, what questions do, do you have right now? Because some of you might be actually in the process of writing one. Does, does anyone, and I'm very happy to answer questions, do you have about um, the, the personal statement? Any, anyone at all? Okay. Um, this little comment right here, the statement should be deeply personal. And I can't um, stress. Yeah, go Mrs. ahead. Lloyd, someone um, wrote a question in the comment section. Yes. Um, so they are asking. Go yeah, go ahead. They're asking, is there any thing specific we should mention? So I'm guessing that's mean like any key points they should always mention when writing their statements, the personal statements. Let me um, if I ask that question correctly, Sarah. Yes, um, I, I think I think you want to um, talk about yourself personally, and again, why you are interested in this field. That that would be the main thing. Is what what has brought you to this place in your life, in your path, where you're thinking about going on to graduate school in this particular field. Um, and then I would tie yourself to them if there's a way to tie yourself geographically. For example, if it's a school in Florida and your grandparents live in Florida and, and you're very familiar with the school, you might mention that. If it is a school where you have a, a family member that graduated, you might mention that. Um, I had a student ask me, if they're an avid sports fan, like let's just pick on um, Duke University, if they're, if they're like a Duke fan, should they mention that? Well, absolutely, but do it in maybe a by the way, like that should not be the focal point of your essay, obviously. But yeah, you could throw something like that in there. Um, the thing I would tell you to stay away from is you do not want to sound like everyone else. And, and we see this in our, in our office every day, whether it's graduate school or applying for an internship. People use the same terms that everyone else uses. So what might those be? Like, um, I'm an excellent communicator. I'm a team player. I'm responsible. I'm organized. Um, you know, I'm a leader. I've, I've, so if you are those things, Give them examples and say it in a different way um, than saying something like, I'm a team player. What does that even mean, right? What does that really even mean? Um, I hope that helps. Any other questions? That was great. We have another question. So Charles is wondering about how long a personal state Okay, that's a great question, um, and that actually leads me into to a very important point. Many schools give you prompts for their essay. Um, I cannot stress this enough. Um, I, it, you know, like if if in this presentation I could use you know neon neon red lights to flash this point. Um, pay attention to what they tell you. 
So if they give you a prompt, be sure you answer that question. If they give you a character or a word limit, be sure you stick to that and you don't go over. Um, I can't give you a pat answer of how long it should be. If they don't tell you and they don't give you any parameters, then I would say a page and a half to two pages, it feels right to me. If it's three or four pages, that's long, okay? Um, you don't want to lose your reader. And I'm going to say something that's kind of bold. It's, it's going to make me sound like an English teacher. If you can't get your point across, if you, if you need four whole pages to get your point across, your writing is probably not tight and concise, okay? Um, so I think I would just answer it by telling you to pay careful attention to what they ask you for. Because let's face it, you all, if you can't follow their directions on the application process, you're not going to make it to base one to get any further down into the process of getting an interview or possibly getting admitted into the program. Okay, I know that sounds kind of harsh, and I'm sorry for that. Um, other questions? Okay, so there's no, yep. there's there's no more questions in the chat right now, but I'll let you know if anyone um, asks anything throughout. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, we're doing pretty good, Jordan, for me to not really know how to do this online. <laughs> um, okay, so brainstorming ideas are right here in front of you. Um, and, you know, this is a really good one. What kinds of early exposure to the field left an impression on you as a child? Um, I can think of many answers for that. So lots of people go into the medical profession into physical therapy because they went through some sort of medical trauma. Um, I'm going to guess that probably seven or eight out of 10 people who are practicing PTs, physical therapists, themselves have gone through PT. Okay, Maybe they were in a car accident or a sports injury. Um, so it's perfectly fine to talk about that. Um, I would just be careful not to give any confidential information. For example, if your brother, um, you know, was busted for, for drug possession and went through the court process for drugs, that might have definitely left an impression on you and caused you to want to, to go on to law school. But you might want to be careful what details you say about your brother, and, and you all can understand what I'm saying there. Um, and this is a really good one, okay? Have you shadowed or done volunteer work or an internship um, in that field? Have you done research through the Survey Research Center here or the um, research in creative works, okay? What have you done that relates to that field? And there's a word there on the brainstorming prompt, volunteer, and I just want to speak about that for a minute. I am a huge fan of volunteering, and we get questions every single day in our office about internships. And, and sometimes I get kind of feisty, and I, I just want to go out there and tell students, internships get way too much of the limelight. Um, not every organization offers internships, and some organizations don't even really know what that means. But pretty much every organization will take a volunteer, um, unless it is something that's highly confidential. Like <clears throat> if you want to be a psychologist and get your master's in psychology or your doctorate in psychology, you probably cannot volunteer at a therapist's office to help them give, you know, do therapy because of the confidential nature involved. But maybe you could volunteer at a psychologist's office in the front of the office to help make appointments. Um, and at least if you did that, or if you got a summer job working at a therapist's office, you would be exposed every day to the kind of work they do. Um, 
And then I will say that in the health sciences, so PT and OT and PA, um, and of course, medical school, all of those fields require contact hours as part of the application process. Um, and maybe contact is not the right word. Observation maybe is a better word. Is there anybody on this seminar who is, has applied or is applying or is thinking about applying to one of those health professions where, you, where they're asking you if you have shadowing out? Okay, so maybe not. Um, but that's a real thing, and um, if any of you all know Dr. Brett Woods, um, he recommends that one of the best ways to get hours that is to get your EMT. Um, so I don't know how many of you are interested in the medical fields, but becoming an EMT, which of course is emergency medical tech, um, you definitely get your contact hours. And of course, you can't be an EMT until you're certified. And High Point University actually does offer a certification process for that. Um, you can get it back home, wherever you're from, at, at your local community college. But um, anybody can become an EMT if you go through the process. Um, a lot of retired people do that because it's something they can do that is not a full-time endeavor. Um, Okay, that's a lot of information. Um, so here's, here's our little guide, consider your audience. We, we talked about that. Um, so this is a really interesting one. Um, if somebody was applying to law school at Liberty University, they, they have Liberty Law um, versus, you know, one of the most, you know, think just think in your mind, a super liberal, um, you know, more progressive type of law school, maybe Columbia in New York City, uh, New York University. The, 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 the mission, the values, the vision, um, everything about those schools is vastly different, applying to Liberty versus New York University. Um, and, and I don't need to expand on that except to tell you that it's, it, it's going to be helpful, well, not just helpful, but it's going to be actually a matter of survival for you to understand the institution, okay? Are they public? Are they private? Are they church-related? Um, you know, a lot of people don't realize that High Point University is a United Methodist institution. We are connected to a Christian Protestant organization, the United Methodist Church. And um, I don't think that necessarily, you know, governs every move we make at High Point University, but it is part of who we are. And that would be important for you to know. There's a lot of law schools that are private. You think of Campbell University here in North Carolina. They are, um, they are a Baptist school. Uh, Wake Forest University is private. Elon University is private. And then, of course, you have the, the big public um, UNC Chapel Hill. And I'm just picking on law schools right now. Um, I talked about the prompt. OK, so this is pretty cool. Um, we talked about format, or, or, or you should think about format, word count. Whatever they ask you to do, you give them what they want, OK? Now, I think probably, and, and this, you know, you guys know about the structure. This is pretty much the structure of anything you've ever written while you were in college. Um, what I want to stress, because all of this is here for you, um, and I do want to give credit, by the way, to my coworker, um, Emily Long, if any of you all have worked with Emily, she developed this guide, or at least um, she updated it. We had sort of the basics from several years ago, and she made it look awesome. Um, so one thing that, that, that I absolutely have to stress is you need plenty of lead time. So give yourself a long runway 
you know, whatever their deadlines are for the personal statement, give yourself plenty of time so that you can have it reviewed by someone in our office, by a trusted professor, um, and you're not right up against the deadline. Uh, something that's really distasteful to anyone is for you to contact them and say, I know this is really last minute, but I this is due on Friday and I really need somebody to review this. You don't want to do that because that presses them and they might not give it their full attention. And then what if they review it and there's a whole lot of corrections you need to make? Then you haven't given yourself enough time to do that. Um, and, and this is important, this distinguish yourself from others. And I think I mentioned that earlier, but I'll give you a funny story here. Um, my daughter went to look at uh, University of Virginia as, as a college. She, she did not apply there, but she got enamored with, you know, hey, I want to go to UVA. And, and so we went and looked at it. And um, one of the things they told us was, because UVA requires an essay for their undergrads. Of course, it's a, it's a highly academic, competitive school. And they told us that so many people, like something like 75%, who apply to UVA write their essay on Thomas Jefferson founding the University of Virginia. And the guy was funny. He was like, you know, really? Like, like, we don't know that. Like, we haven't read that a gazillion times. Um, and I always remember that example. So you, you really want to be out of the box. You don't want to talk about the same things that everyone else is going to talk about. Um, and by the way, she, she looked at UVA for that visit. And, and, and on the ride home, she, she was like, there is no way I would ever go to this school. So um, it, it's super competitive, and it's a wonderful school, and people who get their degree there, you know, it's highly respected, but it was not for her. Um, so here's some mistakes to avoid. You can see that this is, this is really a comprehensive guide. Um, and Brad C.A. Yeah, yeah. So this, this is a centralized application service. And I'm not going to say much about it, but this tells you the diff different disciplines that use it. And I know for sure that OT, if anyone's thinking about occupational therapy, um, I know we've had a student apply to OT school through the centralized this common app system. Um, so I'm not, I'm not too sure about some of the others. Um, that's what we have on grad school and personal statements. And, and then um, I don't want to spoil the panel for next week, but if you do, if you do have a time in your schedule to come to that, what's going to be very different is that today you've just heard from me and on the panel you hear from four different people about their experiences uh, with grad school. So that might be really interesting. Now, Jordan, what other topics we have time left? What other topics do you want to be sure that I cover? So the last one was more of just like an overview of what can your office do to help students besides for when they're applying to grad school and writing their personal statement. So just okay. an overall view. Okay, perfect. Um, before I, now I just flipped over to the um, website. Can everyone see the website? Everybody yes, we can see, yeah, we see yeah. at the bottom of the, the website, yes. Okay, perfect. Um, I cannot believe I haven't had any technical issues. I'm very, I'm just very happy about that. <laughs> um, before I jump into that, I'm just going to take a few minutes and walk you through what's on the website. Are there any more questions at all about personal statements or grad school? Okay, all right, then what we'll do is jump over here. So um, if you look on the left side of the website, we have it broken down. The first section is exploring careers. So let's say that you're not even thinking about grad school. Let's say that you are getting a degree in English or a degree in psychology or a degree 
in general business administration. And you really wonder, what can I do with my degree? Okay. So we love this resource. What can I do with this major? And we can't take credit for it. Um, another university, uh, University of Tennessee at Knoxville actually developed this, and we pay them a fee to use it. Um, so let's just go to, I'm going to pick on psychology again because it is a, a very popular um, major. So we go to psychology. There it is. It's just being slow, maybe. Come on. Yep. So um, you see all the different areas and human services, and then here are the ways in those areas, you know, counseling, music therapy, so on and so on, crisis work. Here are the employers that, that would happen in human services. And then here are some strategies of tips and, and strategies of how would you get a job in that, okay? Then the line separates the areas. So the next area is research, and the format is the same. The next area is education, human resources. And I want to just say a quick word about human resources because many of you know that we have had a major called human relations here at High Point, and that major is going away and it will be brought back in a sort of revamped as human resources. And that major will be in the School of Business because human resources is, is very much the people aspect of business, okay? Um, and so on, here's another area, business and industry. Um, the wonderful thing about this website is that every single major we have has a page like this. And at the bottom of the page, this is genius to me. Look at all these links. They're live links that take you to other places related to psychology or English or accounting or whatever that major is. Okay? Um, that, the reason we pay another school is because it is a full-time job just keeping these pages alive, you know, and making sure they're correct. Um, so let's backtrack. Um, informational interviewing is something that we push a lot in our office, and it's one of my favorite things. No matter what you're thinking about doing, if you find someone who's already doing it, so they, if you're thinking about marketing, they already have been, uh, they have a career in marketing. They've been doing it, let's say, 10 years, even five years. Um, talking to that person and saying, what is it like to work in marketing? Why did you pick this? What do you like about it? What are the good points, the bad points? Um, it's, so it's not a job interview. It's not trying to get an internship necessarily but it's just um, talking to them for information. And most people love to talk about themselves. Um, so it's, it's a very easy thing to do. When you click into that, we have an informational interviewing guide. Okay? Um, all kinds of things that you see there. I'm just going to quickly go to the questions because I know our time is tight. <clears throat> and so those are the top 10 questions you would ask. Uh, how did you get started in this type of work? What's your favorite part of the job? This is my favorite question. What advice would you give someone who wants to work in this field? That is genius. If they've been in marketing or accounting, um, whatever the field is, um, and you ask them that, I would listen to what they tell you over what we tell you. And I know that might sound strange, but the reason is I have never worked in accounting. So if you ask an accountant, what advice would you give me to become an accountant? I would go with what they say. I think, I think that makes sense. Um, we do offer some career courses for credit. You can check those out. They're just one credit. Okay, so internships, it's all here for you. Um, many students do internships and get credit. However, you do not have to get credit. It's totally
totally optional. Um, and we get this question pretty much every week. Can I do an internship and get paid and also get academic credit? And the answer is yes. So that's a win-win if a company wants to pay you and also give you academic credit. Um, so when you get academic credit, there are academic things you have to do that makes sense. You have to write a paper and keep up with your hours. If you don't get academic credit, then, then you don't have to do any of that and you can still put it on your resume as experience, okay? Um, and then of course, I'm not gonna go into all of this because that's a, that would be another whole workshop really, but we do everything you can imagine to help you search and apply for internships and jobs. Um, we critique resumes and cover letters. We point you in the direction of where to look. Um, we really talk about networking and using your connections because the truth is most opportunities and, and you guys just let this kind of sit for a minute, just, just listen to how powerful this is. Most opportunities, as many as maybe 80%, are never advertised, okay? So when you go on indeed.com and you think, you know, hey, I'm gonna look for a, for a job, for an internship, you're only looking at about 20%. So the way that you find those other opportunities that are not listed on the job board is through connections, through informational interviews, through volunteering, through meeting people who know you and know what kind of a worker you are. Um, and it's, it's just, I almost want to use the term like it's it's going out into the field. If we use it like an agriculture metaphor, it's going out into the field and digging to see what 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 you find, what's been planted, what's out there, rather than going to the supermarket and seeing all the produce that's laying there for you to buy at Whole Foods. It's just right there for you to pick up, right? That's easy, it's on, it's on some job board. But there's way more better, healthier um, things maybe that you have to dig up on your own. Um, and I'll be honest with you all, we get a lot of pushback in our office about this. Students expect that they should go to Purple Briefcase, which is our internal job board, or LinkedIn, and find their internship and they send in their resume and boom, they've got it. And it's just not that simple. It's, it's a long process of research and applying and following up and writing thank you notes and talking with people. Um, and I am just a nerd about it. I, you know, I've been in this field for many, many years and I think it's fun. I think, I think it's actually a really fun process because when you start out, you don't have anything. You don't have an internship. So what have you got to lose? You don't have a full-time job. So what have you got to lose? You know, so, so it, it, it only can take you in a positive direction. Um, and then we've already talked about graduate school. We, a lot of what we do in here is interface with employers. And we actually have a new staff member starting um, in, in a, I think, another week or maybe two weeks. And her title is Director of Corporate Relations. And so her job is to make connections with employers who will want to hire High Point graduates, okay? Um, that's what we do, okay? And then if we move over to the right, I just want to point out we have career events all the time, just like the graduate school panel that, that I've invited you to for next week. We have something on the 9th for conflict management. On the 13th, understanding the job market into uh, understanding the job search in today's market. Uh, and obviously today's market is very much influenced by what's happening politically and with COVID and all of that. 
Um, we're offering that twice in October. And there's some other things they are just not on there yet. We decided not to put things on there too far in advance. Um, so this is a new feature that we have, and these are not all the jobs, of course, that would be ridiculous. But these are just a few of the full-time jobs that you'll find on Purple Briefcase and a few of the internships. Purple Briefcase, um, and a cool story about that, it's actually, that's actually the company's name, Purple Briefcase. So we didn't change, we didn't have to change the color of, of purple. <laughs> so of course we just kept it as Purple Briefcase. And some schools who use it change the, the name internally. So um, say Clemson might be um, Tiger Paws or something like that. But we kept Purple Briefcase. And it's a job posting system where employers contact our office and post opportunities. And where you as a student can post your resume and have your resume reviewed through Purple Briefcase. Um, and obviously, you would just go on our website right here. And oh, you know what? That took me. I apologize. That's my administrative site. So that's not where you would be. Um, when you click on Purple Briefcase, it looks totally different. But you should still click on it and be sure you're registered in there. Uh, because again, that, that is our internal listing. And what I mean by that is companies contact High Point University wanting to hire someone. And, and so we put that information on that job board for Purple Okay, that's a lot of stuff. I realize how much we do in our office. Um, we have an awesome team. I, I, I can just tell you the people that I work with are absolutely amazing. And we used to have our profiles. Let's see if we're still there. They may have taken them down because we have two staff members joining us. But um, we, we have a, a wonderful staff in, in here and all of us we kind of switch around. We, we can all help you, but, but there are a few of us that have specialties. So Alan Unger is the um, career advisor who specializes with the School of Business. And then Emily Long and myself, we often specialize with the younger students um, who are looking to find their major. And I, I don't think I've mentioned that we have, um, I'm, I'm backtracking now, so forgive me. We have something called Pathway U, uh, and Emily Long and I work with that a lot. And, and that's a self-assessment. You might have heard the term career test. It's a self-assessment to help you figure out your path and, and your major and what you want to do after college. Most of you, I'm guessing, are, are well aware of your path, and you don't really need that assessment. But if you did need it, it's open to any student. Um, but most any of us in the office you can schedule an appointment with. And the way you schedule an appointment is right here on this button. Um, so there is a lot of confusion about scheduling with us through Starfish or some of those other platforms. And we are not on Starfish. We are only, you can only schedule with us through our website. Um, and then you go into TimeTap. That's the company we use, TimeTap. And you register or log in, and you can you can tell us why you want an appointment, and it will give you the different career advisors and the, the openings that they have. I do know for sure that we're scheduling now out into November. There may be a few openings here and there, but most of us are booked up until November. Um, Jordan, what else? Um, that you seem to have hit everything. I'm looking at the chat and there doesn't seem to be any questions. So if you have any questions, please either unmute yourself or write it in the chat so I can ask Ms. McLeod. But if no one else has any comments, I think that's it. You did amazing. So I really want to thank you for your time and doing this for um, ALD. Oh, you're welcome. And I'm sorry for opening. I've had different things opened and and when I went to Purple Briefcase, it, it wasn't opening properly, but 
I think we got through this pretty well. Oh, no, this was amazing. Thank you. You were perfect. <laughs> well, it's a lot of information. Um, so what I would just want to say to everyone is um, a thank you for your time. And I, I invite you to reach out to our office because obviously the best way we can help any student is one on one. Um, because your situation, your questions are unique to you. And even though you might have to wait a bit to get an appointment, we are happy to sit down and talk with you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Ms. McLeod. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. You all have a good evening. You too. Thank you.